Zero accounting software, bills to pay, and suppliers. Get ready to be an office hero with Zero. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in our custom zero homepage. We set up in a prior presentation. I'm going to zoom in a little bit by holding down control, scrolling up on the mouse wheel. I'm at 175%. Zoom in. We're going to go to the demo company, selecting the demo company. I'm going to open up two more tabs to put the major financial statements in by right clicking the tab up top and duplicating the tab. And the new tab, I'm going to right click on it again, duplicate again. Going to go back to the tab in the middle, so it should be done thinking at this point, so I can easily go into the accounts drop down, reports, and then go into the balance sheet. As it's thinking, I'm going to go to the tab to the right and do the same thing accounting drop down, reports, but this time the income statement or profit and loss, the major two reports. As it's thinking, going to go back to the middle change the date on this one so i want to make this one as of the end of 22 so 12 31 22 now oftentimes that'll refresh updating it automatically if you're working real time but of course we're working in a demo file therefore we're going to have to customize the dates from time to time so let's go back to the first tab now and we talked last time about in essence the cash outflow process the expenses cycle the vendor cycle the purchases cycle and we looked at a flow chart, which is not in zero. It's actually a QuickBooks desktop flow chart, but just to visualize the flow of the money going out. Remember, when we're talking about the purchases of goods and services or possibly inventory, at the end of the cycle, whatever the cycle is, we would expect money to be going out. That might happen by us simply writing a check or decreasing the, the checking account using the data entry to just decrease the checking account right when we get the bill and we might do that with the bank feeds or we might have more of an accrual process typically done by larger companies entering the bill when we receive it which increases the accounts payable and then we're going to pay off the bill with in essence a check type form decreasing the checking account and then to complicate matters a little bit if we have inventory we may have a purchase order requesting inventory, but not paying for it or receiving it yet, and then receive the inventory and enter the bill at that point. So if we go back in then and say, okay, well, what's gonna be the process of us tracking the bills? Now note, if I hit the plus button, the first type of transaction where we just pay things off as they happen, possibly with electronic transfers, would just be with the spend money form which might be like a check form. This is the kind of form I'm gonna hit the checking account. Usually the money would come out of the checking account. This would be the type of form that would just be decreasing in essence the, the uh, checking account. And we can, assign, we can assign it to the account down below. And if it's inventory, we can have an item here. This is also the form that if they're electronic transfers, you might be generating with the use of bank feeds, for example. Uh, that, but it becomes a little bit more complex if we're entering the bill. So if I'm entering a bill type of form, opening up a bill, then it looks quite similar. But now instead of decreasing the checking account, this is going to increase a payable account. So if we enter a bill, that's going to be formatted here. If I look at my, my balance sheet, that's going to be instead of an, an asset, which is usually cash up top going down, we would have a liability. Notice the checking account is current down here because it's over... If there's an overdraft on it, that's why it's in the liability area. But typically, accounts payable would then be going up as you enter the bill instead of the checking account going down would be the general idea. Then we'd have to track the information in the accounts payable and determine when we want to pay it. 
Now, we're, in practice, normally we'd go back to the first tab. We would normally go into something like the uh, accounting dropdown, I'm sorry, the business dropdown, and then we can go into the pay, uh, pay to bills. So this will help us to kind of sort the outstanding bills that we have. So you got your drop downs up top or your information up top, the tabs up top, we could call them. All, we've got the drafts, if there's any drafts that are in place, the awaiting approval items. So within the, the process of entering the bills, you might have a system where you're just entering the bills and then you're gonna be paying the bills. If you have a more complex accounting system, then you might have like an approval process of a request and then entering the bills and so on. So that you'd have an internal control process that could be a little bit more complex, having more people involved in it to try to reduce errors and frauds. And then awaiting payment. So these are gonna be the items that we would most likely be searching for when we're gonna to try to set up the payments, decreasing the accounts payable and paying the bills. These are the ones that have been paid. So if there are questions about bills that have been paid, this is one area we can go. Oftentimes, however, the bills that have been paid will be paid by per particular custom or suppliers or vendors. So we might also check, as we'll see shortly, in the contacts dropdown and sort this information by suppliers. And then uh, we've got the repeating transactions. You might have some kind of transactions that are gonna gonna repeat. So so you're gonna have like, they're gonna be kind of like memorized, happen automatically. So you've got those items in the repeating transactions if you set them up. So let's go back and go into these in a bit more detail. If I go to all the items over here, you've got your search tool up top, which might make it a bit easier to search stuff. So Bayside, for example, will narrow things down so the search field can be useful if you know what you're looking for. You can set the date ranges, the start and the stop, the date type, any date, uh, the transaction date, or the date due. So the transaction date, when you're talking about a bill, when you enter the bill, if you got a utility bill, for example, and when you enter that into the system, that might be the transaction date. And then you're gonna have a due date, which you wanna make sure that you're entering into the system when you enter the bill, because then you can sort by when those bills are due. Now, clearly, a, a, a smaller business, like I say, you might be paying the bills whenever you get the bills, but as you get more transactions, then it's, it becomes useful to try to pay the bill as late as possible, because that's gonna be the typical cash management strategy. Again, if you only have like one utility bill and it's like $100 or something, and you pay it 15 days earlier than you otherwise would have if you waited till the last day, not going to affect you too much but if you're talking about many transactions and or very large transactions then the cash management strategy of paying as late as possible becomes more and more of of a valuable and material thing to do so then you want to kind of sort in this format so in other words if i enter the bill drop down and i go into a bill when i enter the bill i've got the date of the transaction and the due date the due date is going to be when the bill is due and you're probably going to be wanting to sort by the due date so i'm going to go back in uh, close this out and go back into my pay bills area so there is that one and then uh, you've got some filtering options for the deleted or voided items so don't show or show so typically if you voided something or deleted them then you oftentimes don't want to be searching for those unless you're looking for them in particular, in which case you can show the deleted and voided items with this option. Now, like with most softwares, there's, there's multiple ways you can do different things. So you've got the new bill, so you can create a new bill up top here. You can also enter the bill that's the same thing as going here. If you hit the drop down, you also have the repeating bill here. You've got new credit note and you've got the import bills uh, in this area. So you can kind of think of this as the bill kind of center or sorting area. And then you can go to your options that are kind of related to what I would call the vendor cycle or the expenses cycle. And then you've got your drafts. If you have any drafts, then you could sort the drafts here, awaiting approval. If you have an approval process, which is usually kind of a, a more complex type of system, adding more internal control items that would have an improve approval process in place so that uh, you reduce the likelihood of fraud and so forth. Maybe we'll talk about that a little bit more in the future, but for now, we're just gonna go to awaiting payment. 
So these are the ones that are going to be basically outstanding that are looking to be paid. So you could sort them searching them this way. You've got the start date and end date. Once again, you have the anytime, the transaction date, the due date, and the planned date. So the due date and the planned date, probably the ones that are going to be uh, useful oftentimes. If you find the transactions that you want to be paying, if I go into a particular transaction here, for example, then and you want to pay one, this is the amount. You can make the payment down here with a little item down below, and you've got the date. And then you say paid from, typically you would think the checking account, reference number if applicable. And then if it's a check form, you can check off the pay by check form. So basically this is gonna in essence be a decrease to the checking account type of form because you're paying off the accounts payable and it would be decreasing the accounts payable and then decreasing the checking account. If there's a check applicable to it, then again, you can check off the pay by uh, check item here. You also have the capacity to see some more history related to this transaction down below and add notes uh, if applicable. So I'm not going to enter it right now. I'm going to go back to the to the business drop down. We're going to go back into the pay bills here and I'm going to go into the awaiting payment. Note that when you're navigating within a web based software, you don't usually want to go up here to the browser and go back. You usually want to find how the software has allowed you to navigate, you know, within the software. So using the drop downs is usually the better way uh, to go. So if we go back in here, you also if I select multiple items, I can hold down like shift and select multiple items at a time and make a payment that way. So I now I can select multiple items, which can be a quicker way to do it. We can also add a planned date. So if I add a planned date, then I can sort by those planned dates. That's another way that can help us with our sorting mechanism. So I'm going to uncheck uh, those items. Then we have the amounts that have been paid. So if I go to the paid ones, so now these have, have finalized through the transaction. So if we're looking for something that had been paid, we can go into here, sort by date and sort by the date type and so on. And then we've got the repeating transactions. If we've kind of put transactions that are going to be uh, going in somewhat automatically on a periodic basis. Now, the other way that you might sort for things is, is by vendor or by supplier. So if you have a question from a particular supplier, then you might go into the contacts here and go into the suppliers and then find that particular supplier. So if I go down into a supplier and I had a question from ABC Furniture, for example, then I can go into that particular supplier here and we can go into details with relation to it. So we have an await, a bill awaiting here. You got the purchase order awaiting payment and so on. So now we've got the detail by a supplier that we can go into and sort in this fashion. We also have the contact information on the right. We have some options for the add to a group merge uh, archive, and then we can edit as well. So if I go into the editing option, We've got the information related to the supplier. So contact information. Now, oftentimes, if you're just paying like the utility bill, then you probably don't need a lot of detail. You might just have, in essence, the name. But if you're dealing with a major supplier, then you're going to want more information like the business information, the addresses, uh, the financial details, and so on and so forth. So I'm going to go back to the contacts. Note, I'm not going to hit the back arrow. But instead, I'm going to use this cookie trail up top. I'm going to be working within the actual platform, not by the browser, as, as much as possible. Note that that takes me to all contacts. So up to here in, in the tabs up top, if I go back into the suppliers, now we're back in with the suppliers here. So within the suppliers, you could set up a new contact. So if you enter the new contact up top, we have a, a similar kind of data input screen that we went in when, when we went into the edit screen. You might be creating new contacts also as you do data input forms on the fly or as you go when we enter, say, uh, payments as well as bills and possibly purchase orders. Back to the contacts. If I go back to the contacts, it takes me to all. I'm going to go to the suppliers area, which is our focus. Note too that you can you know, select multiple items down below, possibly add them to a group. You can merge them if necessary. You can archive them. If you have activity within a particular uh, supplier, 
then you don't usually want to delete it. You can't really delete it because you've, act, you've got act financial activity with them. But if they're not useful in the future, maybe you want to archive them so that you don't have to see them all the time and your contact information because you're not planning on doing future business with them. So I'm going to unselect those. The next area that might be important that's related to at the end of the process pain or outflow of cash would be in the business drop down and that would be the the purchase orders so the purchase orders would only be applicable if you actually are purchasing inventory and you have the capacity to request inventory before paying for inventory unlike what you typically have to do when you buy stuff online where you pay for it before you receive it so in this case, you've got a little bit more leverage. They're going to send you the inventory. That means the purchase order is only a request. So that means that the purchase order is not actually having a financial transactions. We have to sort it in some other area and we're sorting it here, right? So we can now sort our purchase orders. When we receive the purchase orders, then uh, we can find them here and basically populate possibly a bill with them at that point. So we, get, we can add a new purchase order. We have all the items down below. We can search and that will give us uh, the search for within start date. So we can set a search in here. We've got our drafts. So if you have any drafts, they're going to be in this tab awaiting approval. Once again, we've got that kind of added step often the case within a purchasing process. Now the purchase of inventory specifically larger companies are likely to have more of an approval process to kind of have more internal controls to reduce likelihood of fraud and whatnot. And then the approved items. So we've got the approved items are over here and then uh, the items that have been billed. So the general flow of the purchase order would be that you're gonna create the purchase order. It's gonna be approved. And then you're gonna, once receiving the purchase order, you imagine the purchase order has been received, whatever the thing is that we, requested the inventory that we requested to be purchased has been received then we can create a bill you know from the purchase order that's when the financial transaction takes place actually increasing the accounts payable to be paid in the future so if i go into a new purchase order if we were requesting the inventory we've got the contact we, we're going to go into the forms in more detail but we enter the the detail here it looks like there should be a financial transaction related to it but there won't be because it's just a request and we haven't got the inventory. And then uh, we go through, let's go back to the drop down up top and go into the purchase orders. So, so then we could have a draft. It could be awaiting approval. Once approved, now you're imagining that the purchase order has been sent to the supplier. Once they ship us the goods, then we might go into the purchase order and match out what has been received to what was requested and possibly then here we can go into the options up top and possibly copy to possibly a, a bill right because we might be billing with this with the information in the purchase order so i'm going to close this back out possibly to that you have an invoice as well because if it's inventory then we might use that as well to try to uh, bill turn around a bill if i purchased it for a particular customer so we'll talk about that more in future presentations so just a quick recap on the balance sheet, the end result of the balance sheet, when we've got these kind of payments for goods and services that we are purchasing for the business, if we buy them with cash, possibly just using bank feeds, you'd have a decrease to the checking account. The other side typically go into the income statement with a, a, a right check type form or a decrease to the checking account type of form. Note the checking account is overdrafted. That's why it's a liability here. You can drill into the checking account by clicking in on it. That gives you in essence like a general ledger or some transaction detail on below. So you can see here we have the payment types items here, the payable payment. They're going to be a credit if you're looking in terms of debits and credits and you've got your running balance and your gross. And then it gives you your related account, which is the accounts payable. So this paid off and accounts payable. So then these are going to be increases here, right? And I can go down this paid off the accounts payable from the accounts payable. So they're going through the AP. So you could scroll down. This one went directly from a bank service charge. So notice this was a money spent item. So if I go into that, I can drill down on it and it'll take me back to the source 
and we'll, we'll deal with this a little bit more in the future, but notice they used a spend money type of form. So this is why using this demo version is quite nice or using any file that's already been constructed because then you can go back and back and drill down into the source document deconstructing. Now I've told you that in general, you'd wanna basically be going back and forth by the items that are inside the website. But in this case, I'm gonna use the back browser here. It works fairly well oftentimes. I'm gonna go ahead and go back to the uh, details. So here's the actual detail once again. And then if I go into this item, this item was to pay off an accounts payable, a, a, pay, a payable payment. So basically it's still like a check type of form decreasing the checking account, but specifically though, this form was paying off a accounts payable. That means if you want more detail on it, you gotta go back to the actual bill that was entered, which oftentimes you can kind of see linked in here, but this one in particular, like many of these in the demo file, uh, was generated from a repeating transaction. The original repeating transaction has been deleted. So in any case, I'm gonna go back with the arrow up top, back to our transactions here, and then I'm gonna go back again. So this is gonna be our detailed report. It's useful to look at these transaction detail reports. These uh, source often gives you kind of an indication of what I would call like the data input form that has been put in place. The debits and credits, if you know debits and credits could be useful, increases and decreases, and then the other account that is impacted will let you give you an idea of the other account that is gonna be impacted. There's two accounts at least each time a financial transaction has been put in place. So let's go back again. So I'm gonna go back. And then if we enter a bill, the other form, the other account that will be impacted is the accounts payable. So accounts payable is here. If I go into the accounts payable, then we've got the detail in, in essence, a general ledger type of format and it's gonna be increasing and decreasing with the payables. So if I go in, for example, for a payable invoice, I go into the payable invoice. It was once again created with a repeating transaction, but a bill which was basically input into place, increasing the payable. Now it's a little bit confusing the terminology they use because notice within the system, uh, the, the, the zero system, we're calling a bill as something that someone billed us for goods and services that we entered into the system as a bill increasing the accounts payable. But in the transaction detail up top, you gotta be aware of they entered it in here as an invoice. So that terminology is getting a little, a little muddled up here, but you know that you're in accounts payable so that you know that this, this is an invoice, basically a bill. So which way, which way is the transaction going? Bills and invoices depend on which side of the table you are on. I'm in accounts payable. So they're saying that this payable invoice is basically like a bill. So, but notice that if you get used to these source items, they can help indicate, you know, the form that is being used for the data input and you want to tie the form to the actual transaction. And this is the, uh, pay, the payable payment. So now the bill is being paid with this item. So if I go into here, the bill is being paid. Once again, if I try to go back to the bill, it's gonna be one of those uh, repeating transaction bills. So I'm gonna go back and go back. Now note that this accounts payable account gives us the amount, I'm gonna go back again, that we owe to vendors or suppliers in total. If I double click on that, or if I click or zoom in on it, that gives us the GL but and meaning like the transaction detail. But what I also want to see is who I owe the money to. Now, normally in practice, we do that by going over here and we can go to our contact lists and see who we owe the money to and we can track the bill payments. But you can also see four uh, reports. So if I right click on the tab up top and duplicate it again and look at subsidiary reports related to accounts payable, accounting dropdown, reports and we can go into then our reports down here the age payable detail the age payable summary are going to be common kind of reports because that'll also give us an aging the billable expenses these are reports that are going to give us detail about the payable let's go into the age payable detail report so open that one up and i want to take a look at the the detail for 2000 
2022 is that what we were, we were doing so let's do a custom date and let's take it to the end of 2022 let's make it through december 2022 and update it so now we've got our detail and it breaks it out by how old or past due that's why this report is useful because it gives us a little bit more information that we than we can get from like the lists over here but the bottom line is that the total of this report breaking out by who we owe the money to totals out to 10,291.84 which you would think would tie out as of the same date to here 10,291.84 so that's you want to think about the accounts payable who we owe the money to needs a subsidiary report which is going to give us that same information by who we owe the money to and this report will also give us the added detail of how outstanding those balances are to help give us a feel for that as well in practice we're also going to be using the internal devices tracking the the bills that need to be paid here as well as as tracking the information by contact which would be the suppliers that we who we owe the money uh, to so that's a general overview of the payment cycle at the end of the payment cycle we we would expect money going out in some way shape or form for uh, the goods and services either by just issuing the check right off the bat decreasing the checking account or going through the accounts payable tracking the amount that we owe and then paying it at some future point Thank you